Hello, welcome back to the Cumbrian Homestead. I think it's the 15th of November. We've had a lot of rain, so it's affected filming, but uh, I'm hoping to get a few clips done today. So, this is our magnolia tree. It's uh, been dropping its leaves. Picture a valuable resource. So I'm collecting those. And then always, quite often, when I'm uh, collecting, I start finding uh, seedlings. So here's a little U seedling, courtesy of the birds. And uh, move you around a little bit. There's actually one there as well. So they'll be potted up and they can go down to join the others in the new uh, hedgerow that I'm planting. Just a point note to say that I, when I uh, bring carrots home, I store them here in this uh, cupboard, in this uh, foldable tray thing, and you can see that the, I haven't washed them. What I found was, um, there's one, once or twice, when I started to wash them down at the plot, as soon as they hit the water, they split. Uh, I don't know why that is, is that because they've already contained so much water it was just like a bubble burst or does anybody know? But I figured it was better to um, not wash them, bring them home and then just uh, wash them when we're just before going to use them. So as I mentioned before this is our herbaceous border. Uh, so what I'm going to do, we've got a window of a couple of hours, it's, uh, what time is it now? Half twelve, so rain's coming in about three they reckon. So. I'm going to get my secateurs and uh, we'll start to clear this. As I said, all this is going to get put through the uh, chipper. So we'll see how far we get on. I'll bring you back. Well, I've been working for just on about an hour now, I think. Just coming up to an hour. And uh, surprising what you can do <laughs> in an hour. I've sort of put them in different uh, categories of size just really make it easier to uh, go through the chipper so I'm going to do that now the hazel over there that'll be done separately and I'll chuck it back onto that bit there but also I found uh, another yew tree here yeah. so there's two at the front and there's one there and I've already got one potted up so that's another four to go in the yew tree into the yew hedge down on the micro orchard. So I'm not sure how long that took me, about uh, <coughs> excuse me, about half an hour. But uh, so there's three nice laws of greens and browns. So I think I'm going to take those down to the plot, put them on the compost heap just now. So there's only a tiny little bit left. And then, uh, like I say, hopefully if we get another dry day this week, I can get in and take those out. Take that lot out there, probably, well, I'll let the fuchsia alone for now on this little bit of colour. But the other thing I need to do is get in with the leaf back, and uh, there's a whole load of leaves in here. And see if I can get those out as well, because they're really good for the uh, leaf mould and the compost. So that's a pretty good start. Yesterday I managed to clear most of this uh, border and get it chipped up down to the plot on the compost heap. And uh, you can see that this morning I've managed to clear the rest of the perennials, including the fuchsia. The wife said she didn't, she wasn't bothered, just get rid, you know, chop it back, so fair enough. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is try and get these leaves. I'll have to just pick them up by hand because they're far too wet to, for the leaf vac. It'll just clog it up so I'll try and get as much out as I can and then that'll um, and then I've, I've got a bees and broom to sweep the lawn and then we'll have a look uh, see what it looks like then. I mean there's obviously things that um, this is a come on Woody what is it? It's a vine of some sort. <laughs> kiwi. It's a kiwi. Um, so that's obviously going to need trimming back. You see there's a big growth come out there. 
thrown in the middle of the rows, this standard rows. And also, I think uh, I'll take Brian from Allotment Life left to comment on one of my previous videos, videos when I was pruning roses, saying that uh, he used to just head them back slightly and then give them a major pruning spring. So for this one, even though it is protected by this fence from the westerlies, uh, I think I will just tip that back, not, you know, prune it really hard back. So thanks for that uh, tip round me. Uh, again, that goes there, needs a little bit. But other than that, the main aim is just to get it, get everything just a bit tidied up, really. So, right, I'll, uh, I have to say, this particular border, well, and the rose border, really, is more the, my wife's um, domain. It's not how I do it, <laughs> I have to say. Definitely not how I have it, but anyway, each to his own, so we'll crack on and I'll bring you back in the due course. So, there we go. That's it done for another year. I think I might say to the, the wife I'm going to go on strike. I'm going on strike. <laughs> or I want better terms and conditions. I think she's getting a better deal here. Yeah. But yeah, you, you can see now there's certain things uh, like these come through from next door like a crocosmia so they'll have to come out and uh, where was it before? yeah same wasn't there, there was some ivy I'd noticed but this is how it starts, just a little seedling but if you don't get on top of them you know, I mean, look at the length of roots on that. And then people wonder why all of a sudden they've got ivy growing everywhere. There's another one there. So, yeah, I always make sure uh, anything like that I get rid of. You know, volunteers that I don't want. Like I said, volunteers that I do want. Is this uh, little yew seedling, so I'll have to get that potted up at some point. And there's the my fig that I layered. So next spring, I'll have a look at that, see how it's doing. Right, I'm off down the plot to. I've got some black currants to prune, so I'll catch up with you down there. See you in a bit. Right, guys, we're down on the MO. Uh, here's the raw black currant bushes. It's really windy, so I might have to just film this without doing any narrative but basically you want to just uh, take about a third of the old wood and the old wood can be distinguished by the colour. The dark wood is the old wood and the lighter wood is the new wood. Okay so let's get started. Falcor number eight, wolf pruning so here's old wood take it down near the base as you can one out in the centre and just head them back a little bit Taking those off, so that's it really. Okay, I'll get on with the raw and I'll bring you back. 
Right, that's it guys, it's done. They're, they're only relatively young, they're only about three years coming into the fall season, so not a huge amount of wood to remove. Um, it's going to burn. This is a uh, Pruned all the gooseberry brushes so they can dry out and then they'll get burned. I'll just show you. I have made a start clearing the grass and weeds from where I'm going to put the rhubarb so when it dries out a bit I just need to pull that tarp back and get that get out along that edge there then the as I say another row of rhubarb going in there that's just the sweet pea frames uh, I took down got the damson pruned and there's some of the two year old trees I've brought over ready to replant. Okay, I'll catch you in a bit.